Apple's M1 computers really like using the internal SSD for memory swap space. And SSDs can only be written to a limited number of times, so should we be concerned about the lifespan of our M1 SSDs? Let's discuss. Now, to answer this question, it's helpful to know a little bit about SSD technology, but don't worry, I promise not to delve too deeply or get too technical in this video. And I will answer that question that we just posed. Solid state storage is not a new invention. It's been around since the 80s. In fact, I can remember buying SSDs for my Scion pocket computer. Good times. Uh, but I digress. An SSD is made up of NAND cells. And in simple terms, what they do is store an electrical charge. They literally trap electrons. And that state persists even when your computer is switched off. To read the data back, you pass a voltage through the cell's control gate, and then you measure the current that's needed to complete the electrical circuit. And that then determines the state of the cell. Reading the data like this has no effect on the life of the cells, but each time a cell is programmed or written to, it sustains a small amount of damage, and it reduces the life of your SSD uh, by a tiny amount. Now, due to the way that NAND flash works, each cell must be erased before it's programmed. And this process is measured as a program arrays or P slash E cycle. The lifespan of a cell then can be measured in the number of PE cycles that it can sustain. And the number of cycles that a cell can sustain before it stops working will vary based on the type of cell. And I'm not going to delve into the different types of cells in this video because, as always, I'm aiming to keep the information accessible to the widest audience. Uh, and I want to finish the video in under 10 minutes. Suffice it to say, though, that the cell types differ on how many bits of data each cell can store at any one time. And that, in turn, affects the number of PE cycles, and it also affects the cost of the SSD. So manufacturers are looking to find a compromise for their consumer drives. Performance is further improved with wear levelling. So the data writes are spread across the cells in the SSD to provide more even wear. And manufacturers usually put extra cells on the SSD that can take over from other worn out cells to extend the life and to protect against early failure. So how do we as consumers get to know the life expectancy of a drive? Well, we're reliant on the manufacturers to tell us that number. And manufacturers can calculate it by looking at the number of PE cycles per cell and counting the number of cells on the SSD. And they can come up with a total amount of data that can be written to the SSD. This is normally expressed in terabytes written, or TBW. And once your drive gets to that maximum TBW figure, the manufacturer no longer warrants it. Now, of course, it might just carry on for many years afterwards. The actual lifespan will vary from one drive to the next, but I guess you could view it as being on borrowed time once you get to that figure. So in this video, we'll focus mainly on TBW, though there are other metrics that manufacturers quote too. And I say manufacturers quote these metrics. Naturally, Apple doesn't publish any such helpful information about the drives in the M1 because, well, it's Apple. So let's take a look at one of the better consumer SSDs on the general market, the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And what we'll do is we'll assume that Apple's drive offers a similar performance. Now, I think this is a fair comparison to make because, based on my experience anyway, it appears that Apple SSDs are of very good quality. Now, we did say that we wouldn't discuss the cell types in this video, but it's helpful to know that the 970 Evo uses 3D TLC cells. Uh, and this type of cell, you can typically expect a PE cycle limit of between 500 and 3000. The lower end will be for consumer products with shorter warranties, and the higher end will be for enterprise or industrial grade products. They cost more, and they'll come with a longer warranty. The 970 Evo is not enterprise grade, but it's not entry level consumer either, and I suspect that you could say the same of the SSD in Apple's M1. Now fortunately, Samsung publish a TBW figure for each capacity of the 970 Evo drives. Uh, it's a shame that Apple doesn't give us that information. I say that they don't give us that information. I, I haven't been able to find that. If uh, anybody knows the answer, please uh, leave a message in the comments section. For the different drive capacities, you have different numbers of cells. Larger capacity means more cells, and 
therefore the TBW figure will be higher. So it ranges from 150 terabytes written on the 250 gig version of the SSD, all the way up to 1200 terabytes written on the two terabyte version. So in this case then, the TBW figure is equivalent to filling up the drive 600 times. And on the surface, that might not seem like very much. In practice though, it's actually quite a lot. Look at it this way. Suppose we've got a 250 gigabyte drive and we expect it to last five years. Now I'm sure that many of you would like your SSD to last longer than five years, but uh, let's just use it as a starting point. Now, without factoring in leap years, if we take five years, multiply it by 365 days, we get to 1825 days. Now we take that 150 terabytes written figure and we divide it by 1825 days. And what that means is on average, you can write 0.082 terabytes every single day. And that equates to about 84 gigabytes. That's a lot, particularly if you consider that most people won't even use their computer every day. So when we consider how much the Apple M1 uses the swap file on the SSD, the obvious question then is, will it shorten the lifespan of the SSD? And the simple answer to that question is, yes, it will. But perhaps a better question would be, will it cause my SSD to fail during the realistic lifespan of the computer? Bear in mind that these first Apple Silicon machines are targeted at general consumers. I'd say the answer to this question is no. Most computers use drive storage to swap memory, uh, and they always have done. It's efficient to take a chunk of data that's not in active use in the memory, write it out to an SSD, and then free up space in the system memory for active tasks. And because the SSD is so quick, reading that data back into the memory is fast enough that you probably won't even notice that it's happening. That said though, the M1 does do this rather more than Apple's Intel machines do. And that probably makes sense given that the memory in the M1 is shared between the CPU, the GPU, and all the other processors in the silicon. Now on the eight gigabyte M1 model, we've seen very large swap usage, but even the 16 gigabyte model will actively use swap space on the SSD. So yes, the additional usage of the SSD is shortening its lifespan. Any data written to the SSD shortens its lifespan. Uh, and due to the way the M1 works, you could argue that it has more of an impact than it would in an Intel Mac. But you've got to be really pushing your machine to get to that 84 gigabytes per day figure on a consistent basis. And I'd expect that other components in the system would wear out before the SSD does. Don't forget also that we did our calculation based on the smallest size SSD. If you go for the one terabyte model, then you can write 336 gigabytes per day, every day for five years. So if you're an enthusiast user and you intend to absolutely batter your M1 machine day in, day out, then perhaps this will be of concern to you. Uh, particularly, of course, as you can't replace the SSD in any of the M1 machines. Uh, but if that is the case, uh, and you're looking to buy an M1 machine, well then you've just got to go for the 16 gigabyte model with the largest SSD that you can afford. Uh, and that, of course, is a piece of buying advice that Apple will love to hear me giving out on the channel. In all seriousness though, most users don't need to worry about this issue, uh, unless Apple has cheaped out on those drives, but I doubt that that's the case. So if you're an M1 owner or prospective owner, hopefully this video gave you a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, I think we're fine and we don't need to worry about our SSDs too much. They'll probably outlast the amount of time that we keep these machines for, uh, particularly as there's much faster machines around the corner and you know how Apple likes to tempt us with those bigger figures. In any case, I hope you found the video useful and informative. Perhaps you would consider joining our growing community with just one click of the subscribe button. Got to say that I am absolutely stoked to have hit 10,000 subscribers just this last week. Um, it's a humbling experience, it really is. I appreciate it so much. All of your comments and your support, uh, I can't thank you enough. Maybe I did enough in this video to earn a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that's your thing. But in any case, hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.